Hey everybody, so this is the last of my introductory videos to my Christian case against Donald Trump. I'll actually be starting chapter one this weekend. So today I want to talk about the main argument that I'll be making over the next several weeks. And in addition to that main argument against Trump, I want to answer the question, what's the most important specifically Christian reason to oppose Trump? Now, if you ask 10 people what the main Christian argument is against Donald Trump, you might get 10 different answers. And while they're all true as far as they go, they don't really get at the main issue. Many people make the mistake, for instance, of focusing on Trump's sexual immorality because for too many Christians, that's really the only type of leadership sin that they know how to talk about. And of course, Trump's sexual immorality is an issue, especially since he's been found liable by a jury for actual sexual abuse, and he's been credibly accused by many other women of doing to them exactly the sorts of things that he brags about doing in the Access Hollywood tape. So I get why people focus on those things. It's unthinkable that a majority of people who call themselves Christians will vote once again this year for a proven sexual predator. Others are going to focus on Trump's corruption. They'll point to the ways that he's corrupted every institution that he's been involved in, from his own businesses to the Republican Party to our institutions of government. And they'll point again to the fact that he and his Trump organization have been successfully sued time and again for fraud, with more cases ongoing. Not to mention the criminal cases against him, which everyone has heard about. So yeah, I get why people focus on those things. It's unthinkable, again, that a majority of people who call themselves Christians will vote once again this year for a proven financial fraudster. But that's still not the main reason for Christians specifically to oppose him. Now, many others are going to focus on his lies, not just his lies, but his strategy of spreading utter falsehoods in almost every sentence to the point that fact checkers just can't even keep up. Or they'll focus on the big lie about the 2020 election and talk about how he lost over 60 court cases about that lie, but he keeps on telling it and how that lie led to people dying on January 6th. And they'll talk about how that lie has taken over the entire Republican Party apparatus at this point, and how, this is important to me, by the way, and how it's destabilized the thinking of all sorts of his followers, including his Christian followers. And I get why people focus on that. It's unthinkable that a majority of people who call themselves Christians will vote once again this year for a proven serial liar who despises the truth. But even that's still not the main reason for Christians specifically to oppose him. I could go on and on with this stuff, and it's all important, and I'll be talking about all of it in this series. His appeals to violence, his hateful abuse of anyone he considers an enemy, his demonizing of immigrants, his strategy of dividing father against son, sister against brother, in his name. I could go on, and all these things are important. And each one individually is disqualifying if people are willing to set their political habits aside for a moment and just look at him. But they're all just a part of a larger problem. The problem with Donald Trump is not fundamentally a personality issue. It's not about personally disliking him. The reason Donald Trump isn't just another like spoiled rich kid that we might read about in the tabloids and shake our heads and move on is because he's forcing himself on the nation and the world once again. And he's forcing us to decide whether we're for him or against him. You've probably heard the story of the blind guys who are trying to describe an elephant by each touching just a part of it. So they describe the elephant as a trunk or a tail or a tusk. And when it comes to the problem with Donald Trump, the malignant narcissism might be an ear. The pathological lying might be a tusk. 
The greed might be the belly. The abuse might be the feet. But what's the elephant? The reason it's hard for us to see the whole elephant is that Donald Trump and his supporters create a cloud of confusion around him that makes it almost impossible to get perspective. The constant whirlwind of depravity isn't a bug with Trump. It's a feature. It's a technique that he and his supporters use to overwhelm our senses and make it impossible to see the whole elephant. It turns out if we want to see the whole elephant, it's easier if we step back a little bit, if we step out of the whirlwind of depravity and just gather our wits about us. And one of the best ways to do that is to look away from the daily details for a moment, away from the flood of news stories that are meant to shock us and numb us at the same time. Instead, we need to look at the pattern. And the pattern that explains everything Donald Trump does and says. The pattern that explains why his supporters pretend to believe him when they know that he's lying to them. The pattern that explains why the Republican Party caves into him again and again. The pattern that explains why Christian leaders have sold their souls to him. That pattern is one that you see around the world. Step back from the craziness and look at the broader world and the pattern comes into perfect focus. The pattern is authoritarianism. The pattern fits perfectly. The early stages of authoritarian movements that we've seen in history and we're still seeing today. Through the lens of authoritarianism, nothing that Trump does is surprising and none of the capitulation to him by frightened or ambitious leaders is surprising. That's why chapter one of this project, which I'll start releasing this weekend, is all about authoritarianism. That's where I'm starting. All of the things that we find shocking about Trump, all these things that would seem to make it unthinkable that Christians would support him, are just normal behavior for authoritarians around the world. And Christians have been supporting guys like that for a long time. So authoritarianism is the main lens that I'll be using to make my Christian case against Donald Trump in the coming weeks. Every one of the wicked traits that he shows us on a daily basis and every one of the brutish actions that he takes fits perfectly into the authoritarian playbook. So there's that. But... I started the video by asking what specifically is the main reason that Christians should reject Donald Trump. And of course, it's part and parcel of the authoritarian playbook that Trump is using. Authoritarians around the world use people of faith to empower themselves. People of faith are like their main tool. They stir up cultural divides and they exploit those divides warning the people of faith in their countries that they have an enemy that's out to destroy their culture. So we see this contradiction around the world and back through the early 20th century of some of the most vile human beings on the planet being supported by people of faith. And that's what's happening in America now. I've said before that Trump's appeals to Christians are so blatant, so bald-faced, that if he manages to win, he will have won in Christ's name. And everything he does after that, the world will see that he's doing it in Christ's name. That's the reason Christians have to oppose him. Just yesterday, he made another of these explicit appeals to Christians, far more blatant than any presidential candidate that I can remember in my lifetime. So right now, he's weaponizing the fact that Joe Biden signed the annual International Transgender Day of Visibility Decree that happened to coincide with Easter this year. Now, whatever you might think about that day of visibility, it's something that started somewhere else and it's been happening around the world on March 31st for several years. And Joe Biden has signed that proclamation in previous years as well. Biden wasn't linking it to Easter. It just fell on Easter 
because Easter was on March 31st this year. So Trump sees this as a perfect issue to use to keep Christians on his side since he's betraying them on abortion. Now, I know a lot of you don't like it when I play clips of Trump, but honestly, I don't know how else to do this. You have to hear his words and see his actions in order to understand just how blatant his appeals to Christians are going to be during this election. So here he is yesterday morning. I predict November 5th, the most important day in the history of our country, and it's going to be Christian Visibility Day. Christian Visibility Day. Christians are going to come out and they're going to vote like never before. Around the world and down through history, some of the most vile human beings on the planet have empowered themselves by making naked and ridiculous appeals to people of faith. And every time, in the light of history, people have looked back and asked, how could they be so gullible? How could they fall for it? Well, are you falling for it? Are you saying, well, I don't like the left's cultural agenda, so even though Trump's a beast, he's my beast? Well, That's the exact calculation that people of faith have made again and again when con men like Donald Trump have come along and made these explicit appeals to their darkest nature. And it's never ended up benefiting the cause of Christ because these guys build their power base through lies, through hatred, through abuse, through depravity. And when you see it anywhere else in the world, or at any other point in history, you recognize it. Are you willing to recognize it here? Or are you willing to let Donald Trump's dishonest and abusive tactics work? Donald Trump isn't offering anything life-giving to Christians. He's using Christians to achieve the same things that every corrupt authoritarian has tried to achieve throughout history. So... I do hope that November 5th is a Christian day of visibility. I hope Christians in America show up and reject Donald Trump once and for all. That's the kind of visibility that might show the world that we believe our own gospel and not the false gospel of hatred and division that Donald Trump is peddling. Thanks for listening.